Hi, in this video, we are going to see how elegantly we can handle technical service exceptions in a business process. Most of one of the most uh, common ways by which technical service exceptions are handled is by defining a boundary event at the specific service task and then the specific flow of action that needs to happen when that particular error event happens. This way of modeling is absolutely fine, but there are few downsides to it. Uh, one of the most common downside which we would see for this kind of a definition is that for every service task that is there as a part of the business process, we need to define the specific error event and then the execution path for that. So that means we have to repeatedly do the same thing for each of the service tasks in the process model. What would that mean is that the process model would get cluttered with a lot of technical exception handling information. And for instance, if a business user is going to come in and have a look at the business process model, he would obviously be overloaded with a lot of technical exception handling stuff. Now, how is it possible to overcome this particular problem or a limitation? Now, JBPM, with the latest version of JBPM, there is something called as process work item handler exception using which the exceptions can be handled in an elegant way. Now there is a very nice article which is called handle service exceptions via subprocesses that's available in this particular link which describes in detail as to how this particular exception really helps in handling the service exceptions but specifically the technical service exceptions and it also mentions the different strategies that are supported for this particular exception handling which is complete abort retry and rethrow the same article also has a detailed demonstration of how the complete strategy could be applied for handling a technical exception and um, um, so in this demonstration how it's going to be different is that in this demonstration i'm going to show how the specific strategy called retry could be actually applied for a web service work item handler going back to the process model um, so let's say we have this process model and we would like to change this process model into something like this which is neat and simple which doesn't really have the exception flow path explicitly modeled as a part of the same business process now as the article details it out the option available for us is to actually model the specific flow of action in a different process which is the sub process which we can if we can call it that way so it's a different process which is explicitly going to focus on the exception handling ideas or the exception handling mechanisms so now uh, for example in this example what i've done is uh, i have just put in um, a simple process model which is going to wait for few minutes or few seconds um, so for instance in this case i have modeled it as something which is going to uh, wait for 10 seconds and then it's going to update a specific counter and go back and retry the execution of the actual web service task which failed now if the second if the subsequent invocation of the web service again fails again the control will come and instantiate a new instance of this particular process and again the control will come here and wait for 10 seconds and then it goes back it goes back on and off based on the condition that is defined here for example in this process model i have defined the condition as max value is less than or equal to 2 so if the number of times the number of retries that has happened so far is less than 2 it goes through this path where it waits for some time and then goes back to the parent process model where the service exception has happened and retries it if the number of retries is more than 3 which is defined here more than or equal to 3 it will go for a human intervention so somebody has to actually go in there and invoke um, or correct the specific uh, problem and then can submit the task so that the failed service task would get re-invoked so just to summarize once again so this is the web service task and which is going to invoke 
uh, one of the locally deployed web services. So this is the local web service. So I have the web service that is defined and deployed uh, here, which is what this particular task is going to invoke. And in addition to the standard set of parameters uh, that are required to be passed for the invocation of a web service, there is another attribute, a custom attribute, which has been added here, which is called code, which is nothing but a counter variable, which is going to keep track of the number of times the specific web service task has been retried. So this is actually the simplest uh, definition of the process model with a, with a sample service task attached to it. And uh, this is actually, sorry, not this one. This is actually the uh, exception uh, handling logic, which is modeled in this particular sub process. So if we look at this sub process as well, one of the important points to be noted here is that um, this sub process will also have uh, the same parameter, which is called the code, uh, which is used to keep track of the number of retries that has been attempted so far. And um, that is the same parameter which will be updated back when the number of retries, when for af after the uh, execution of each of the retries, this particular parameter will be updated. And once it is updated, since it is a, a mapped uh, process parameter, the same value would also be updated in the parent process. Uh, in which the service task has failed. Okay, so now with this setup, let's go ahead and do the deployment and um, see if it really helps um, to handle the exception in a more elegant way. So let's do a build here. And once it is built, let's deploy it. The process model has now got deployed. Now let's create an instance of this particular process model and uh, a new process instance will get created and it will try to invoke this particular web service. And um, the, the implementation of the web service uh, is, is very pretty simple and straightforward. And intentionally, um, this particular implementation is always going to throw a runtime exception whenever it is invoked uh, in order to emulate the failure of this particular web service call. Uh, the implementation has been done this way intentionally. So let's go back and invoke the particular process model. Let me just go back, process definitions, discard. Okay, and this is the process model that we would like to invoke, which has the web service task. So let's start it off, submit and let's see what has happened so far. Okay, so as expected, it actually tried to invoke this particular web service and it has failed because the web service is always going to return a runtime exception. Now, when we go back to the process instances, here we can see as expected, when the call had failed, it automatically invoked the deal with exception process. Now, what has happened in that process? The process was invoked. The process instance has uh, got created. It came here and waited for 10 seconds, updated the counter, and then went back. So when it went back, actually what happened is it went back to the parent process more process instance, which is this particular instance, instance number five for call WS proc and actually it again triggered, re-triggered uh, the same it, web service. And again, it would have failed because the web service is always going to return the same uh, response, which is basically the runtime exception. As a result, the, the loop continues on and on until the condition was, uh, was, was met. So for instance, I've just removed all the active i uh, removed the filter so that it will show all the process instances that has got created so this was the parent which was uh, process instance which was um, invoked the first time when we invoked the process model um, and then uh, there were there were like three retries that happened so this is one instance when the retry happened so this is the one which went for the first time and once again after 10 seconds 
it tried to re-invoke the web service in the parent process instance again it failed so this was the second attempt in which it actually waited for 10 seconds and then incremented the counter and went back to the parent process instance again the third time it tried to re-invoke the particular web service it failed so again it went to this particular process instance uh, again waited for 10 seconds and finally it has reached uh, a state where it went here but then the exception uh, happened again and so it went back to the specific exception handling process model and we see that the counter uh, has as the size of the counter or the number of retries have reached the limit of three that we have defined in the process model and automatically it has landed in this particular step where a manual intervention is required. Now this actually helps to handle the exception in a more elegant way in the sense the actual parent process model really doesn't have this information about the specific exception handling path uh, that has to be invoked when the particular web service invocation fails. Um, so this pretty much summarizes um, the idea behind using the subprocesses or an external processes, external process model to handle the service exceptions. And uh, one key uh, item to be really uh, understood here is the configuration. So now now that we have seen like okay the sub process gets invoked whenever the service task fails how does the linkage actually happens between this particular process model and the exception uh, process model the process model that, de that defines the exception flow so if we go to the deployment descriptor and if we go to the work item handlers so we have the web service work item handler which was actually used in this particular process model and if we look at the um, definition of the specific work item handler that's been mapped here, we can see that this particular web service, web service work item handler class supports four arguments. The first one being the handler strategy or the handler um, process model, um, the process model which should be invoked whenever there are exceptions in this particular web service work item handler and the strategy that has to be used which is the retry strategy followed by the key session and the class loader which is to be used for creating an instance of this particular work item handler so so these these new uh, the new new implementation of the web service work item handler provides uh, additional constructors which takes in the specific process ID which needs to be used in case of the exception and the specific strategy that needs to be used for this particular work item handler. And uh, that is it pretty much and I hope you like this uh, particular demonstration and thank you for, for watching.